mom has Parkinson's. Today is going to be all about drugs. Not the fun kind, but the various different medications available to treat Parkinson's disease. Understanding the options can make a big difference in the quality of life and management of the disease. Let's get started. Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that affects movement, among other things. While there's currently no cure, there are treatments to help manage the symptoms. There are two categories of treatments, direct treatments and symptom treatments. I'm going to list medications by type, how they aim to help Parkinson's patients, and any side effects that have been published for them. I am not an expert. I am not a doctor. I do not work in the medical field. I am a normal person who is just trying to navigate this disease with my mom. I have a ton of research that I've done and I'm just sharing that information with you. Okay, so the first medication is Levodopa Carbidopa. It's a mouthful. Um, this is probably the most popular, most prescribed medication for Parkinson's disease treatment. The names of the drugs that contain Levodopa Carbidopa are Cinemet, Ritari, that's what my mom takes, Duopa, and Parcopa. This combination is the cornerstone of Parkinson's treatment and I believe is usually the first medication given to newly diagnosed patients. The drugs all contain these two medications, Carbidopa and Levodopa, but potentially in different proportions. It comes in both immediate release and extended release versions. How does this medication work? So levodopa converts to dopamine in the brain, which helps control movement. Carbidopa is added to prevent the levodopa from breaking down before it reaches the brain, enhancing its effectiveness. Right now, it's considered the most effective treatment for Parkinson's, but long-term use can lead to motor fluctuations and involuntary movements. Uh, these medications add dopamine to the brain. Medications like levodopa increase the levels of dopamine um, in the brain. This medication is usually effective, and when it doesn't work, then it usually means that the person has a different form of Parkinsonism, not Parkinson's disease. There is a separate um, disease entirely called Parks Parkinsonism, which is very similar, but different. This medication will not work for Parkinsonism. Um, anyways. So long-term use of levodopa usually leads to unwanted side effects that make it less effective. So there's a long list of side effects. I didn't include them all, but these are the most common ones. Remember, each patient may or may not experience any or all of these side effects. Confusion, dizziness, hallucinations, headaches, dyskinesia, constipation, nausea, allergic reaction, unusual dreams, anxiety, heartburn, double vision, worsening of tremors, tiredness, trouble sleeping, muscle cramps, changes in mood, trouble concentrating, taste alteration, and dry mouth. So wow, that's a lot, right? Uh, my mom only has a few of these side effects, and it's just, it just depends on the person. Some people will have many side effects, some people will have very few. The next type of medication are dopamine agonists. Um, these simulate dopamine. Dopamine agonists are medications that have a dopamine-like effect. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter which causes cells to act a certain way when the dopamine molecule latches onto them. Dopamine agonists latch onto cells and cause them to behave the same way. While levodopa is converted in the brain to dopamine, Dopamine agonists mimic the effects of dopamine without having to be converted, tricking the brain into thinking it has been giving the dopamine it needs. These are more commonly prescribed to younger patients to delay starting levodopa. The common, name, the common names of medications that are dopamine agonists are Mirapex, Requip, Rotigotine, which is Nupropatch, Kinmobi, and Apokin. Say that fast real three times. Um, these medications can be used alone or alongside levodopa. They often cause fewer motor complications but can lead to side effects like nausea, hallucinations, and confusion. Low blood pressure and lightheadedness, leg swelling and discoloration, sudden sleep attacks and excessive daytime sleepiness, and compulsive behaviors like uncontrolled gabbling, eating, shopping, etc. The next type of medication 
commonly given for Parkinson's are dopamine metabolism blockers. MAOB is an enzyme in the body that breaks down many chemicals in the brain, including dopamine. MAOB inhibitors are medications designed to block your body from breaking down the dopamine and will allow more to be available to the brain. These medications are especially useful early on and when combined with levodopa in later stages of Parkinson's. When used with other medications, it may reduce motor fluctuations and treat periods of diminished symptoms control as the levodopa dose wears off. This is called off time. You should watch my video on off time. Um, it was just a couple weeks ago. Um, if you haven't already, it's pretty fascinating. I'll post a link in the description, but you should definitely go watch it because it's very important to understand what off time is. Many of these medications work with off time, so you kind of under, need to understand how that all goes. Uh, some of the popular names of the MAOB inhibitors are L-dinopril, Eldopril, Zelopar, Azelect, and Zidago. Side effects are mild, milder in general than other medications. They include mild nausea, dry mouth, lightheadedness, constipation, confusion, usually in older patients, and hallucinations, usually in older patients. Okay, so the next category of medication, adenosine blockers. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's on the screen so you can read it. Uh, these are medications that block how certain cells use adenosine. It's a molecule, molecule used in various forms throughout the body. Can have a supportive effect when used with levodopa. The basal ganglia is a brain circuit group that plays a role in Parkinson's disease symptoms. It has adenosine A2A receptors next to the dopamine receptors. And the dopamine receptors is which is the target of many Parkinson's medications. But scientists have found that just as increasing dopamine in the basal ganglia can improve Parkinson's symptoms, blocking the A2A receptor may have a similar effect. Since the A2A blocking drugs antagonists do not directly do not act directly on the dopamine receptors, they may be able to reduce off time. There's once again off time again by up to an hour a day without worsening dyskinesia, which is uncontrollable movements. The reduction in off time may be very helpful to some. The only name of this drug I could find was Nurians, and only a few side effects were listed. Dyskinesia, insomnia, hallucinations, and dizziness. There is a note for smokers, however, that was bold, so this must be important, right? If someone smokes 20 cigarettes a day or more, then a higher dose will be required, and they also have a higher occurrence of insomnia. So if you're a heavy smoker, you probably don't want to take that medication. The next drug is called amatidine. This is a medication specifically targeted at tremors, but recently it has been shown to be effective in reducing dyskinesias, which are involuntary movements, that occur with dopamine medication. This medication can be used alone or as a combination therapy with levodopa. This is also a drug that can help with off time off time again. Uh, they have immediate release forms as well as extended release. Some common names of this medication are Symmetrel, Gocorvi, and Osmolex. Side effects are listed as dizziness, low blood pressure, nausea, insomnia, confusion, paranoia, hallucinations, and, dis and legs discoloration. Um, there is also some uncommon side effects listed, which is weird because um, the other medications I was researching didn't really have a separate column for uncommon. But anyways, urinary retention and leg swelling were listed as uncommon side effects for this drug. Okay, calm T inhibitors are next. These medications have little to no direct effect on symptoms, but can prolong the effects of levodopa by blocking its breakdown. Calm T, um which is catechol-o-methyltransferase. <laughs> I'll put that on the screen too so you can see it. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, inhibitors are mostly used to treat off time. Off time again. I mentioned this above, but I have a pretty detailed video describing off time. Please watch it. COMT can deactivate levodopa before it enters the brain and central nervous system, and these COMT inhibitors can prevent that.
most effective when used with levodopa. Some names of the COMT inhibitor medications are Ongentis, Delevo, Tasmar, and Comtan. Side effects listed are exaggerated levodopa side effects, especially dyskinesias, confusion, hallucination, discolor of ur- discoloration of urine, and diarrhea. The next category is anticholinergic medication. I really apologize if I'm hacking that. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can read it. Um, These medications reduce tremor by blocking acetylcholine, which is a brain chemical that influences movement. Anticholinergics can be helpful for patients suffering with tremors and painful cramping associated with off time. Off time again. However, they have little effect on the symptoms of Parkinson's. This drug does reduce the amount of saliva producing, so it can help with drooling. This drug is recommended for younger patients. Now, here's a note about these drugs. This was bolded, so it's important. Uh, They are not recommended for anyone over the age of 70 because they slow cognitive function. And older patients experience confusion and hallucinations much more commonly on this medication. That's kind of scary. Uh, some common names for these medications are congentin and artane. So common side effects are listed as confusion, hallucinations, decreased short-term memory, dry mouth, blurry vision, and urita- urinary retention. Now, here's another category of medications, which is not really considered a medication officially, but medical marijuana. Has, this has been something I've been wanting to try with mom. It's now legal in California and 38 other states. We live in California. There is strong interest in its therapeutic properties and still being tested on Parkinson's patients. There is currently no conclusive scientific evidence that it's beneficial to Parkinson's patients. But there are some potential potential risks and benefits that I found online from the experts. This is not stuff I've made up. I am not an expert. I'm just a normal person. Anyway, so the benefits potentially can include improvement in anxiety, pain, sleep dysfunction, weight loss, and nausea. But there are also some risks that include impaired cognition, dizziness, blurred vision, mood and behavioral changes, loss of balance, and increased hallucinations. There have been many studies, and some people feel like it helps reduce the symptoms greatly, while others say there's no proof that it does anything. Most of the studies have not followed the clinical trial gold standard of a double-blind, placebo-controlled trial design, and many have very limited participants. So there's not really enough solid data that the researchers feel is conclusive. I have an entire video planned specifically about medical marijuana and various studies and expert opinions. Make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss that. There are other medications that treat other symptoms. There are many medications that treat specific symptoms of Parkinson's like hallucinations, dementia, sleep disorders, depression, fatigue, etc. I'm not going to be including these because there's tons of them and they all have one very specific use. And um, But they're not really aimed at Parkinson's in general. They're aimed just specifically at one symptom. So I'm not going to include those. Now... Deep brain stimulation is not a medication, but it is a treatment. I wanted to include it because a lot of doctors that um, speak online feel that this is a real solid uh, treatment. Um, I don't have any first-hand knowledge of this or experience with this. My mom has not been offered it, but I wanted to talk about it. So in years past, surgery was an option to damage and scar part of the brain that was not working properly on purpose. To get that same effect, deep brain stimulation is an implanted device that delivers a mild electric current to those same areas of the brain. The major advantage of deep brain stimulation is that it's completely reversible. It is used in later stages of Parkinson's when levodopa therapy stops working, or in those whose symptoms do not respond to usual medications. So just keep that in the back of your mind. There are also some experimental treatments Um, and some other possible treatments that could help. They're not widely available, but some include stem cell transplants. This treatment can add new dopamine using neurons into your brain in hopes that they will take over for the damaged ones. It's thought that this can be a single one-size-fits-all treatment, providing lifelong relief from Parkinson's motor symptoms. Um, 
There's also neuron repair treatments. These treatments can try to repair the damaged cells to hopefully encourage new ones to form. And gene therapies are also an option. These treatments target mutations that cause Parkinson's. They expect to be able to reprogram the cells and change their behavior to help them stay healthy and work longer. Some will boost the effectiveness of other treatments, specifically the use of levodopa. So in summary, levodopa is really the most common and effective treatment for Parkinson's right now. It is has greatly improved the treatment of the disease. Some providers use it very cautiously because of the way it works. They will combine it with other medications in order to make it more effective or help with the side effects of certain symptoms. It is commonly combined with other medications to keep your body from processing it before it enters your brain. These help with the side effects of dopamine, nausea, vomiting, and low blood pressure. Over time, your body's use of levodopa changes, and it can lose its effectiveness. You can increase the dose, but that also increases the likelihood of side effects and the severity of them. The dose can only go so high before it reaches toxic levels. Always discuss dosages with your doctor. I hope this video was interesting and informative. I wanted to share the various treatments so that you are aware of them. As always, please don't take anything I say as 100% factual. I am not an expert. I find all of my data online. Please consult your doctor before you make any changes to your medications. I am just a normal person trying to find solutions for my mom. I have pages and pages of notes that I eventually turn into videos so that I can share all my research with you. Thank you so much for watching. The next video will describe how we get mom how I'm able to get mom's medications cheaper. This was huge for us because she's on a limited income and hopefully it helps you too. So make sure you're subscribed and so you won't miss that. We'll see you next time. Stay healthy, stay safe, and thank you so much.